Is there hope for Halo Infinite in 2022? There is a little bit of hope, but there's a lot of doom and gloom. And in this video, we're going to dive into why you should keep an eye on Halo Infinite this year. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. With the recent reveal of the roadmap that we had for 2022 guys with season two again being another six months that a lot of people were kind of asking the question whether or not Halo Infinite is worth keeping with until the release of whatever comes for the game. Because honestly like the first three months of season two are going to be pretty good. Like it's going to keep us rather entertained. We have a new battle pass. We have you know the targeted of the campaign co-op coming within August which would be like the third month right. And then you also have the interference and alpha pack for the narrative events which we haven't seen yet in Halo Infinite so we'll see how that plays out. But I feel like a lot of the same issues we had within season one are going to be carrying over to season two and that already tested people's patience enough and patience just going into halo infinite was wearing on the halo community enough because one we've had lackluster halo game releases since halo reach with halo 4's multiplayer pretty much dying off right away with the campaign being pretty good but then also sparios being a complete flop essentially MCC, well, we all know about the launch of MCC. That didn't get fixed up until 2018. And Halo 5 players just kind of felt like they were getting strung along until they got the full game experience about a year and a half later. And then waiting six years until a full mainline Halo game releases with Halo Infinite. And now we know what the first year of support of Halo Infinite is going to look like, and it's going to be, well, more patience testing and right now the community is just kind of up to here with just waiting and having patience we've listened we've been patient and understandably some points have been kind of rocky and bumpy but for the most part people have been willing to wait until 343 is able to release something that would be fun to play and though the initial release of the game was great but the live service aspect that was promised just hasn't been there with this post here on reddit showcasing how the posts and updates of this game have been well rather minimal i mean we had the entire month of July with a failed update to BTB and a shop update which was very well needed and it was great but one update the one thing that changed throughout January. Now we've had things like Tenrai and all these different events pop up which were great things that kind of keep you over for a week but even that needed updating and changing which again tested players patience even more. And season two is looking to be pretty much about the same kind of experience as season one where the first three months are pretty good but then the last three months are going to be well testing your patience again. And some people just don't have that patience anymore so now we're kind of asking the question is Halo Infinite even worth keeping up with in 2022? Now I would say if you're a diehard Halo fan that Halo Infinite will definitely still be worth playing. It will never die out. It will definitely have a core population of people still playing. You'll still be able to find your matches in most game modes that you'd want to play. Play. Though I still fully expect this trend graph to kind of will keep doing this. So you can see since the end of March there's basically been a leveling out of the player population where I don't really expect things to get much lower than they are right now. With Halo Infinite also sitting right around 13th on Xbox so there's still a good amount of people still playing this on the Xbox platform which is to be expected since Halo has kind of been built up on the Xbox platform and massive keyboard controls don't really play out super well in Halo Infinite so that's why I would assume PC population being down quite a bit. Though I fully expect Halo Infinite to kind of hover around where we're at right now until well the rest of the year. But at the end of this year could see something major happen. Some big changes happen with Halo Infinite. Let me tell you why. Because we still have the big summer game announcements happening and I would have to think that there'd be something to showcase for Halo Infinite. That being what will be the content for season three. Since E3 2022 is not happening this year, Xbox is gonna have to throw their own kind of occasion of showcasing all the cool stuff that they're gonna be doing for this fall. And Halo Infinite is still very much a blockbuster game for the Xbox brand that they're going to have to have something to talk about. That big thing being the Battle Royale that's been talked about endlessly now for Halo Infinite. Rumors saying that it's been in development for at least two years, which would be about the right amount of time you need to develop a Battle Royale. And also targeting for Season 3 or 4 being towards the end of this year which is what Jess Corden was talking about, saying that it could be about the end of this year where we could see this battle royale happening and how certain Infinity is going to be developing this mode. 
which would seem to line up with this tweet that they just put out back on the 12th saying that they're deepening their connections with 343 and Halo to hire out more people to help develop and evolve Halo Infinite into something new and exciting ways. And that's desperately needed for Halo Infinite as a whole. We need new and exciting ways to play Halo. Some simple playlist updates, events updates, and things like that, new maps, or like, that's all great and dandy. Like, that's stuff you definitely need for Halo, but it's not anything new or anything exciting to bring people back into playing Halo. What would definitely do that? Well, the Battle Royale mode. And this mode has already been talked about previously by us on the channel here, talking about the mode Tatanka being the project name for it. But the funny thing is that it was pointed out by some community members saying that Tatanka was a wrestler of the guy who won a 40 man battle royale mode. And I would think something like this would totally be like the, you know, project name of Tatanka of a guy who won a battle royale mode. Now I've seen leaks and rumors saying it'd be up to hundred players, 60 players, 60 players with boss and stuff like that. There's a lot of different ways that 343 and also certain affinity could go about developing this battle royale mode, but this would be exactly something that the player base would need to get excited about Halo because that roadmap definitely didn't do it any favors to get people excited about Halo Infinite. I truly do expect to see some details about Tatanka being revealed for their E3 presentation this summer meaning that we could have the Halo Battle Royale releasing in November, which would be a pretty awesome time, almost like a re-release of Halo if that actually happened. I couldn't imagine any other mode, any other kind of situation to bring people back into Halo than to bring a Battle Royale mode. I don't care what other mode that they make within Halo, some brand new thing that no one's ever played before, it's not gonna generate enough buzz or excitement for this Halo game than a Battle Royale would. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast right now when it comes to first person shooters within 2022. People wanna play Battle Royale modes. They're not fans anymore. Like people were afraid that they were, that they're here to stay. They've been playing it since what, 2013, 2014 with H1Z1, whenever that was popular. It's kind of at the point now it would be like if Halo released without like a Team Slayer kind of mode or something like that. Like that was like the most popular mode back in the day, but now it's all about Battle Royale. Royale. And essentially Halo Infinite released without the modern equivalent of Team Slayer as in not having a battle royale. And the Halo community would certainly be open to the idea of a battle royale. I mean look at this tweet back from 2018 we said just for fun what do you think a battle royale mode would have a place within a Halo game? And well it was basically split right down the middle back in 2018. I can only imagine it actually being probably more in favor of a battle royale nowadays compared to what it was back in 2018. Whatever it is certain affinity is cooking up over there, that's basically going to be writing the entire franchise as what they're going to be working on to where it can get people genuinely excited about this game again. Because King of the Hill is not going to do it, Last Spartan Standing is not going to do it, bringing in new maps like Breaker and Catalyst, that's not going to do it either. These drop pod quality of life improvements we're going to get once a month depending on what's ever going to be in them. That's not gonna really do it either. What's really gonna do it is something big, flashy, and new to do in Halo, that being, well, a Battle Royale mode, wherever the heck certain affinity is cooking up over there. If you guys are new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.